Well, welcome to the first video of the year for homework. We are on uh, sec chapter 1, section 3, doing problem numbers 1 through 35 odd, and we are subtracting rational numbers. So if we work the first couple of problems, you really have to make sure you're reading the instructions. It says, find the sum, use a number line to verify your answer. So problem number 1, we can't just do 3 plus 12 equals 15. You do have to find the answer, but you need to use number line to find the answer uh, so you can verify it. So we've got here, we're going to start with 0, we're going to go up 3. And then from the end of the 3, we go up another 12, and that gives us our 15. So that's what we're looking for. One line plus another line and that's given us 15. Okay, so that's what we're looking for for that first set of problems. Now, I do see when we have uh, problems number 5 through 5 and 7 there, it's just regular subtraction. Uh, you can work the regular subtraction. Uh, let me do, yeah, I'll do the number 5. I have 69 minus 38. I mean, you can just line that up like this and subtract 1, subtract 3, you get your answer, you're all set. You could change to addition, right? Add the opposite, uh, but it's still the same problem. 69 minus 38, and the answer is going to be positive, so there we go with that. Number nine says find the range of uh, that set of data. Now, averages, there's a lot of different averages, and usually when th students think of an average, they think add up the numbers and then divide by the number that you added together. So that's what most people think when they hear average, but there's actually four averages, the mean, median, mode, and range. So the mean is adding them all up, divide by how many you have. So we got this set of data here. Hold on, I'll write it down. So this is the set of data they gave us. So if I add all these up, you get 116. And if you divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that gives you the answer 16. So 16 would be our mean. The mode is the one that occurs the most often. So you can see by looking at the ones we have written up here, we've got a 12, two 12s. We've got 1, 8, 1, 17, 1, 15, 1, 18, 1, 30. So our mode would be 12. Okay? The median, that would be the number in the middle. So to find the median, we'd have to change this set of data. We're going to have to list them from least to greatest. So here I have them labeled from least to greatest. And to find the median, it's the one in the middle. So we start on the outsides. And I go on one, two, there we are, right there. So the median is 15. And then the range is going from my smallest value to my largest value. How far apart are they? That's the range. That's the problem that you're going to be looking for. But we need to get used to not just seeing average and thinking, old, thinking, oh, that's the mean. Because there's lots of different averages, mean, median, mode, range. Okay, so keeping that in mind while we're doing these problems. Okay, students are doing problem number 11, but I, I put problem number 10 up here. So what it says is choose a unit fraction to represent the space between the tick marks on the number line. Write an addition expression being modeled, then find the sum. So all you have to do is decide what value is from here to here. It's got to be a fraction. Got to be a fraction. So you can use halves, you can thirds, fifths. I'm probably going to go with three because I see it ends here. So I'm going to go thirds. So I'm going to see this is one third, two thirds, three thirds, which is one. This would be negative one third, negative two thirds. So I just picked a fraction and I went with it. Okay. Um, I picked one that terminated nicely right here for my final answer. Now, I started from zero, so this is the spots that I started and I went back. So since it's an addition problem, I went back to negative two-thirds. So I have negative two-thirds plus, now, how did I come all the way down here? If this is a negative two-thirds, this is positive because I'm going to the right, I'm adding. 
and it went one, two, three, four, five. And it went plus five thirds, which is going to be just fine for me today. You could say two thirds plus uh, one and two thirds. And then I have to find the sum, and the sum is one. Because according to how I labeled my line, that's what I did. You're going to have to probably draw this back out for us. Okay? Now, if I look at the next problems, you have 13, 15, 17. Oh, 13, 15, 17, 19. So I'm going to do two of those. I'm going to do 15 and I think 19. So let's take a look at 15, 19. All right, 15, 9 fourteenths, negative, 9 fourteenths plus 2 sevenths. 9 fourteenths plus 2 sevenths. Okay, so uh, negative 9 fourteenths plus 2 sevenths. I have to change this into the same denominator as this. And this ought to be easy because 7 goes into 14 twice. So all I have to do is multiply top and bottom by 2. So if I multiply the top by 2 and multiply the bottom by 2, 2 over 2 is 1. I'm just multiplying this fraction by 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So now I'm going to rewrite the problem. Negative 9 fourteenths plus 4 fourteenths. Now I can add these together. Negative 9, positive 4. Different signs. So I really subtract. 9 minus 4 is 5. Larger absolute value, negative 9. Keep that sign. Negative 5 fourteenths. Okay. All right, let's take a look at 19. Number 19, negative 32.306, negative 32.306 plus negative 24.884, negative 24.884. Okay, adding same signs. So I just add and I keep the signs. Now what I would probably want to do is line these up. Negative 32.306 plus negative 24 point line up your decimal points. Point 0.884. Now I can add 6 plus 4, 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 8, 9, not carrying anything. 3 plus 8, 11, carry the 1. 2 plus 4 is 6, plus the 1 is 7, and 3 plus 2 is 5, and keep the negative sign. Negative 57.19. You have 190, that's fine, but really don't need a 0. Okay, let's take a look at 23. Okay, so the instructions say... Describe a real-life situation that can be represented by the addition expression modeled in the number line. So I've got halves and holes here. I'm looking for a real-life situation where I'm going to have, let's see, quarter, half, three-quarters, whole. This is one and a quarter, 1.25. Hmm. I'm thinking, when I see that, I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking money, I'm thinking $1.25. You may be thinking um, one and a quarter hot dogs, you know, or one full pizza and one quarter of a pizza left. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking automatically money. So let's see. So if this is money, so I got a dollar twenty-five, and then I spent it. Oh my gosh, that sounds just like my life. I had a dollar twenty-five. I took away a dollar twenty-five. There we go. So I need to. Describe a real-life situation that could represent the model or on the number line. So I'm going to say um, my mom gave me a dollar twenty-five for lunch and. I spent a dollar twenty-five. Real life situation. Um, you just need to come up with something that makes sense for you. 
Okay, number 27. Number 27 says you are adding two rational numbers with different signs. How can you tell if the sum will be positive, negative, or zero? So I'm adding two rational numbers with different signs. So rational numbers like two-thirds plus negative one-third. So how do I know if it's going to be positive, negative, or zero? And the answer is, if these two were the same, like that, it would be zero. So the same value, I'm going to erase that for a second, would be zero. And then otherwise, we're looking at the larger absolute value. Because if I have, let's say, 5 ninths plus negative 7 ninths, 7 ninths here has the larger absolute value. It's further from 0. So my answer is going to be negative. The larger absolute value determines... positive or negative. Okay, so that's number 27. Number 29, it says, tell how the commutative and associative properties of addition can help you find the sum using mental math, then find the sum. So using mental math, what I am looking at here is I see opposites. Let me uh, change my color here real quick. I see opposites here and here. So I know that these two are going to cancel out to get zero. Okay, so I need to do something. I need to, I can't just use parentheses to do these two because they're not next to each other. So I'm going to use the commutative property, use commutative property. So I'm going to use the commutative property to take this negative 4.5 and put it right out front. And that way I would have negative 4.5 plus 4.5, that equals 0, plus negative 6.2. So I know if this right here is equaling 0, my answer is negative 6.2. So let's go down a little bit. I ask students to start solving their problems in this manner. I'm going to solve one thing. Negative 4.5 plus 4.5 is 0 plus negative 6.2 and that gives me negative 6.2 final answer. Okay, so do have to write some of these out. Alright, find the sum, explain each step. So for, oh, let's do it, 33 I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I'm looking at that and the students are going to go, wait, what? Okay, so to add these up and explain each step, decimal, fraction, the whole number, but I can consider this a decimal also. I'm probably going to have everything the same types of numbers so I can add them easily. So, the question is, do I want to change this to a fraction? Yeah, it's going to be a big improper fraction. Or this to a decimal. I'm going to change this to a decimal. So I'm going to rewrite the next line, negative 4.3 plus. So you have to think, this is a division problem. It means 4 divided by 5. 5 does not go on to 4. 0. Add a decimal point. Add a 0. 5 goes to 48 times. That gives me 0 0.8 plus 12. So, my first step was change to decimals. Okay, now here, I think I'm going to add my positive numbers together first. I could use the associative property, so I'm adding these first. So I'm going to put add positive numbers. Okay. So if I'm adding my positive numbers, this is just going to stay the same, plus 12.8. Now I'm going to do add different signs. 
So when I'm adding different signs, I'm going to take my two absolute values, 12.8 and 4.3. They're different signs. I'm going to subtract them. So when I subtract these two, I get 5, 8.5. Now, my larger absolute value, 12.8, is positive. That means my answer is 8.5. And there's my answer. So explaining each step, why did you do things? That's probably what's going to throw everybody. Now, you could change that to a fraction and then that to a fraction, but uh, why would I want to change two numbers when I can just change one? So let's take a look at 35. Okay, so the problem says, the table at the right shows the annual profits in thousands of dollars of a county fair from 2013 to 2016. What must the 2017 profit be in thousands or in hundreds of dollars? Um, Dow, I don't like that they did that. Uh, to break over the five-year period. So they want to just break even over the five-year period. So the question is, how much are they behind? So to find out how much they are behind, I'm going to have to add all these numbers together. Okay, so I have 2.5 plus... 1.4 plus negative 3.3 plus negative 1.4. One step at a time, I'm going to put these two together first. That gives me 3.9 plus negative 3.3 plus negative 1.4. Hmm. I kind of like these because these are close together because 3.9 minus 3.3 is 0 0.6. 0 0.6 plus negative 1.4. Now I have to put these together. Now this is a little bit harder for me. I have to take negative 1.4, my larger absolute value, so it's negative, and I am going to have subtract 0 0.6. So I'm going to do this off, off to the side here. 1.4 minus 0 0.6, line up your decimal points, borrow, 14 minus 6 is 8. 0 0.8, because the 0 would drop down. So if that's how much they're short, that's how much I have to make here positive, because I need the opposite to break even, negative 0 0.8. But this was in thousands of dollars. So we're not 1,000 short. Oh, I'm sorry, not negative. That needs to be 0 0.8 positive. It needs to be opposite of this. I'm so sorry. Now, that's in thousands of dollars. So it's not quite $1,000. How much is it? Move the decimal point back one. That is $800. That's what we need. We need $800 just to break even. Um, and that's kind of tricky because they threw that in the table. So if you guys come in and say we need $0.8, I'm going to point that out. They asked for the number in hundreds of dollars, but the table is done in thousands of dollars. So if you wanted to see these in hundreds of dollars, it would be 25, 14, negative 33, negative 1, negative 14. So that would be in hundreds of dollars. So that's where the trick is on that one. Okay, so um, uh, there's not very many I didn't show. If I showed one that you did not understand, make sure you ask me tomorrow. Um, but I'm expecting everybody to have these problems done. This problem was number 35. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.